You know, everything starts with Jesus. Uh, he's the author and the perfecter of our faith. The author of, of Hebrews says that everything, everything flows out of the life that Christ offers us, even the prayers that we've been praying in this Dangerous Prayer series. And that's why this morning is looking a little different than what a normal Sunday morning looks like. There's not going to be any sermon or message. In fact, what God has been doing in your lives is going to be the sermon and message this morning because it's important that as we posture ourselves as a church family before the Lord and pray these prayers that we've been praying, that we would also share what God has been doing in our lives. And so this could be a uh, a long service, or it could be a really short service. Um, and at the end of the time of sharing, we've got some really, really cool announcements about what God has been doing in addition uh, to what you share. And so uh, if you've been joining us for the last several weeks, since the beginning of the year, we've been walking through a series called Dangerous Prayers. And they're really prayers that are found in the Bible that move us from prayer 1.0, that is often God protect me, God help me, God provide for me, God get me out of this jam, right? Those are prayers that we pray just because we're desperate. Uh, to 2.0 prayers, which are prayers that, we're pray that we pray because we're desperate for God. We, they're prayers of surrender and submission. They're the kind of prayers where we know we're giving up control and opening our hands to the God who loves us and cares for us. And so as Aaron said at the front of the service, the prayers that we've been praying for the last month are, Lord, speak to me. Lord, search me. Lord, break my heart. And finally, Lord, send me. And so we want to give you an opportunity, and I'm going to have you come up front onto the platform and speak into the mic for our friends that are joining us online. If you're joining us online, we know that you can't, you know, step to the mic, but we'd love for you to type briefly into the chat what God has been doing in your life. We want to celebrate with you as well. It's important that we share these stories because this was something that happened so often in the early church. In fact, after Paul's first missionary journey, when he went through parts of the Middle East and parts of Asia telling people about Jesus, he was launched out of this city called Antioch. And after he came back to that sending city of and sending church in Antioch, it says in Acts 14, 27, that upon arriving in Antioch, they called the church together and they reported everything that God had done through them and how he had opened the door of faith to the Gentiles too. And so this was a normal part of the rhythm of uh, pressing into God, following after God, trusting in God to go to new places, both in their personal walk and relationship with them, but also to new people and then to come back and share those stories. And that's what we're doing today. We're coming back. And we're sharing the stories of how God has met us and what God is challenging us with. Let me say this, a couple of, of notes. Uh, we would love to hear what God is doing in your life. We would also love to hear from other people. And so if you could keep it brief, some of you are chatty uh, when it comes to sharing and, and we wanna hear in a concise and clear way uh, what God is doing. So leave, give space for other people to share as well. You don't have to share a lot. You could just share a sentence or two. Your story with God and what he's doing in your life does not have to be resolved for you to share. I know so often we want to come and share at the end of the story after God has cleansed us and we figured things out and we like kind of look like we've got our stuff back together again. But if you're willing to be that authentic and honest and vulnerable to come and say, you know what, he, he's taking me to this place and I, I'm not through it yet, that's okay too. So anything regarding those dangerous prayers, speak to me, search me, break my heart, and send me that you would like to come and share what God has been doing in your life. Now is the time to come forward. Who will break the ice? How are you doing? Good. Good. Why don't you take this microphone, introduce yourself, and share a little bit about what God's been doing in your life. Good morning. Praise God. 
Oh, my name is Santosh. And um, just to make a brief, starting from today's God's work in my life, yesterday I went for work and my car completely got jammed and so on. <laughs> because as you know, frozen stuff. I had to go from back door to you know, start my car and uh, uh, still it was not opening side doors and so on. And I was telling this morning, Lord, we wanted to talk with you being in the assembly of God. Um, so help us to get through it. And this morning, as um, I, uh, we went there and opened it, then it start, I could get, I could open it, the both doors, side doors as such. Um, I mean, this is a small sign of God that um, I just want to share. But the thing is, as Pastor said, God looks into the heart and intention, and when he thinks that this is my servant in whom I love, I take care of him. And God is doing so many wonderful things in our lives, um, starting from my sister-in-law who lost uh, her uh, husband. Um, she always, uh, she attempted many times to commit uh, suicide, and uh, we were supporting, praying, and all those things. God really so gracious to her that she's able to do the ministry that God has entrusted to her. Um, again, so many things I can bring to, uh, I can share with you, but I just wanted to let you know, God is good, God is holy, God is merciful, God is kind, and God is forgiven. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thanks, Santosh. Appreciate you. <laughs> Tommy? Hi. Uh, for those that don't know me, my name's Tommy Bile. Um, we've been here since about July. And um, this is sort of a difficult place for me, not public speaking. I'm very good at that. What's difficult is that um, for the last several years, the Lord has taken me and my family through a really, really hard road. My wife has an undiagnosed chronic health issue, and we almost lost her. Praise God, she's stable and um, in reasonable condition right now. But... Um, I personally have been experiencing a dark night of the soul, which um, for those of you that don't know what that is, it's, it's a time period where you can't feel God's presence. You aren't hearing his voice. Um, you continue to pray. You continue to seek him. He does convict of sin, and you confess it, and... You do all these normal things that you think will help bring you back into right relationship with him, including a week of fasting. And, um, but you still don't hear his voice. And while that is a, a challenging thing to go through, um, a couple things have happened since we started coming to this church. One, Community has been restored to me and my family. Um, COVID was very isolating, and life experiences prior to COVID ruined a lot of relationships that we had. So it's a blessing to see every single one of you here and for the, the friendship that I've had with Josh and with Dan and, and some Isaac and um, some of the others that I've been meeting with on online Bible studies and things like that. And I guess uh, the main thing I want to share here is while the Lord himself has not chosen to engage with me in this fasting time, it was an incredible blessing to know that I was going through the same experience with my other brothers and sisters, fasting, seeking the Lord, crying out for his Holy Spirit to be poured out on our lives so that we can be usable vessels. It's um, the one thing that I have sort of learned in my time of darkness is that there are times in all of our lives where the Lord says, while I am enough, I refuse to be your all because I want you to be in community. 
And so with that said, thank you for being that portion that the Lord is not willing to share at this time. I know that he will restore his light to my eyes at some period of time, but until that happens, you guys are gonna be uh, the encouragement and the strength that, uh, and the support and the love and the things that I need to see in Christ, seen in you. Thanks for sharing that, Tommy. Thanks, man. Anybody else? For those that don't know you, introduce yourself and then just share how God's been working in your life. I'm Dan War, and uh, God is just really opening hearts around me and opening my heart too. And I just I just want to say that. Yeah. So praise the Lord. Thank you. Thanks, Dan. <laughs> Margaret, excuse me. Huh. My name is Margaret, and I'm four years old. <laughs> <laughs> I, I regress when I'm on stage. <laughs> What's God been doing in your life lately? Um, it's been dangerous because mm. um, what I'm doing is I'm not enabling my son and my husband to buy cigars and alcohol. So you're trusting him for the strength to, yeah. to not... Uh, operate in that not drive them. They, yeah. Neither of them can drive. Okay. So I'm the vehicle yeah. that, that brings them to the store. So I'm like, I can't do this anymore. Okay. Good for you. And, and the Lord's been leading you into that and you're trusting him for that. I just can't take it anymore. Okay. And Well, we'll continue to pray for you yeah. and for your husband and sons. Yeah, and it's been dangerous because yeah. I've been afraid they're going to hit me. Okay. Well, let's... So let's pray they don't hit me. Definitely. <laughs> Definitely, yeah, let's, let's join in prayer right now for this, Lord. Uh, we trust in your protection for Margaret, uh, the things that are happening in her home. Uh, Lord, we come to you and we ask together as a church family that you would surround her, that you'd give her the strength to be light and truth uh, to her husband and to her sons. Lord, that you would keep her and hold her as you strengthen her for these decisions. I pray for your grace and mercy to be poured out on their household. Lord, I pray against any uh, hitting or any abuse that would happen in these decisions as well. Lord, I pray that we would come around her as a church family and that we would support her and care for her as she follows you. It's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Thanks for sharing that, Margaret. Yeah. yeah. All right, so like many of you, I want to tell a real quick story about the snowstorm on Friday. Um, so in our neighborhood, not a neighborhood that gets plowed, um, I had planned to leave early with Brooke in the morning. I went out, shoveled a driveway all the way down, um, you know, make sure we could get out to our road and try to brave it. And as we were going along, there was a person in our neighborhood who was stuck that couldn't move there in the middle of the road. We're at the point we can't back up, we can't turn around, we can't go anywhere else. Like we can't go anywhere until we help this lady move. And we're about a quarter mile or so away from the main road that was plowed. Um, it took us an hour and a half to get her that quarter mile up because her vehicle had bald tires. It wasn't built for snowstorms and everything. And we're working through this and I'm shoveling and I'm digging, I'm slipping, falling, hurting my back. There's people coming out from other houses, you know, to kind of help get this lady all the way out so she could go to Indianapolis for a dog show. Um, <laughs> it doesn't, doesn't matter where she was going. The point was she needed help. <laughs> Dogs are people too. Right? Uh, any case, so I got back in the car with Brooke and uh, we actually made our way, you know, uh, got her to work safely, you know, which is a big praise. But thinking about that, thinking about the Dangerous Prayer series, you know, and thinking about the different things, you know, um, uh, speak to me, search me, break my heart, send me. And thinking when I got in my car that morning, I'd put a shovel, I'd put a board, I'd put some salt. I had all kinds of stuff in my own vehicle in case we got stuck. And then, little, you know, of course, I ended up using it to help a, a stranger. And, you know, through the, I think that God was really just speaking to me, the perseverance. And so, like, if we're reaching out to people in our own lives, we're reaching out to people that we think it's impossible to get this person to know Jesus, we're only moving them one car length at a time, one step at a time. The end result is fantastic. I was being sent that day by God to help somebody. And 
I'm so glad I was able to respond to the call. I'm glad that that was able to happen. But when we respond to the call with people in our lives and through this whole series, the dangerous prayers, we help somebody one step at a time come and find Jesus, help them in any way we can. And what else God did was neat. All the neighbors coming out. God sends us other workers. He's sending us to work. He's sending us other people with us to go help. And that's fantastic. I think it's wonderful. And that's really the thing I got out of this. just the perseverance, one car length at a time. It's worth it. Thanks, Dan. I appreciate that. I think that's a good reminder that as we come to the end of our series, we should continue to pray these prayers that God would continue to use us uh, repeatedly in people's lives. Thanks, Dan. Anything else? Who else would like to share about what God's been doing in your life? So I think the thing that the Lord's been really speaking to me is just to give him space to speak. Um, in one of my, um, just, uh, one of my times just talking to the Lord, you know, I like to pray like blessings and protection on my children and um, for relationships and friends and my husband. And, and I got to a point and, um, where I was, I was praying for Josh and I just said, Lord, I, I don't know, I don't know what to pray today. Like I just felt stumped. And I felt him ask me, why don't you ask me what I want you to pray for him? And he reminded me this morning, uh, not Josh, but the Lord, and the verse in Psalms that says, delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. And I think it's really easy to think, well, you know, like if I'm doing the right things, like, shoots, I'm going to be asking for a million dollars, right? Like, that's not what it means, right? We, if when we begin to in like center ourselves on what God wants and what he's asking us to pray, he's like, yeah, I'll give you that because I'm the one who told you to ask for it, right? Like, that, but God wants us in that, in that conversation, in that relationship with him. So God asked me to start praying this specific thing for Josh. And in the, uh, the last few weeks, I'm starting to see God answer that. But in the midst of him answering that, he's asking me to sacrifice my wants, my desires, my time in order for God to answer that in his life. Does that, are you tracking with me? Like, it's really weird. Like, okay, God, I don't, ah, that's a lot of sacrifice. Like, I, let's go back to the million dollar thing, right? But just watching God saying like, this is what I want you to pray. This is what I want you to ask me. And then just stand back and watch me do it. And I've just been so blessed in that because like when we ask God to speak, like he's faithful to speak. And there are times that it is dark and we don't hear his voice as loud, but it doesn't mean that he's not there. And he's gonna continue bringing light in dark places and um, joy and brokenness. And I'm watching um, God heal relationships. And he really showed me like, Jen, you're carrying a lot of bitterness and I'm like, no, nah, I don't want to deal with that. That's too much work. But like just in expressing that and reaching out and asking him to heal that, man, he's been so faithful. He's been so faithful to begin that work of chipping those things away. And so, yeah, I'm just super grateful because like, I don't know, like I pray things and I'm like, Ooh, okay, God, this is a big one. This is a dangerous one. I don't have any clue how you're going to work this one out because there are things out of my control. Mm. So I'm just so grateful for how he's doing that. That's good. That's what makes it dangerous. Thanks, babe. Anything else God doing in your life as you've pressed into these prayers? Everybody, this is Jamie. And I am not a public speaker, so I will probably be completely red. Um, no, but um, for me, I've had a lot of changes and a lot of things happening in my life. And for me, I... I don't do change. I get very fearful of change and everything. So I feel like God has really been speaking to me to trust in him, lean on him in my fear and just to keep pushing through and just knowing that he's with me and that he's got me during these changes. And um, if I fall or if I fail, then I know that he will catch me. And so it's really this over the past couple months has really brought me closer to God because I've been really trying to humble myself and just trust in all the different things that have been happening to me, to my family, to the people around me. And so, yeah. 
what it is. Awesome. Thanks, Jamie. This is Lord. All right. Will you join me in prayer for these things? Lord, and that's, that's what we do. We, we come to you, and we ask that you would, again, move us from prayers that are self-centered and always about us, which we know you want to care for us, you know you want to take care of us, but we pray that you'd upgrade our prayers to these prayers as we've shared of, of surrender and openness, of giving you space, believing that when we go out, it's uh, we're not just prepared to care for ourselves and our families, but uh, to serve others, Lord, to invest in others. And so, Lord, for the the things that have been shared and the things that haven't been shared, because I'm sure there's things that you've been doing that we just aren't ready to share yet or not ready to share in such a public way, that you are working and you're active and you're moving. And so, Lord, we, we pray over all of these things. We pray that you would work out your will and plan for your greatest glory. And we know that, that sometimes that means that the answer to those prayers are going to come quickly. Sometimes that means that we have to continue to persevere with you. Strengthen us in that perseverance by your Holy Spirit. Lord, we know that in some of our lives, you're opening up doors in relationships to speak your truth and to be your light, to serve without saying anything, or to, to bring correction and to reveal who you are and what it means to follow you. And so, Lord, I ask that that your spirit would guide each of those words and conversations, that your grace and your mercy would cover all of those relationships and interactions. And Lord, for the things that we've written in our journals, that we've pondered before you, that we've thought about in our hearts, Lord, we ask for you to continue to move. Lord, as we move on from this series, may we not move on from these prayers, but as a church family, would we continue to pray with hands open, lives open, eyes open to see you at work. Lord, we love you and we're grateful to you for these stories and the many more of what you're doing in our lives. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hey, I do want to share one thing. Um, one of the things I've been praying uh, in this series is uh, a list of things that I'm like, God, I would love for you to do this, but I'm not going to force it. You ever have that list? It's uh, maybe a prayer wish list. Lord, I'd love for you to do these things. It's not the million dollar prayer. Uh, but it, Lord, I'd love for you to reach these people. I'd love to start this ministry. I'd love to serve the community in this way. That's the list. And then, Lord, I'm not going to force it. I'm not going to cajole it, even though that's part of the deficiency of my personality is to try to talk people into things. Um, and so I've just made a list in, in my dangerous prayers journal. I've just been praying over it, Lord, and your timing as you desire, I trust in you. And uh, last year, the Lord walked our church leadership through the process of refining our mission and our vision. And I want to share what the vision of First Alliance Church is. It's actually not something we promote. We haven't put it on our documents. We haven't put it on, uh, on the wall or anything. And really, that's because we want this to be a God-birthed thing. Again, we could, we could rally the troops. I would love to rally the troops, but there's, there's a part of me that believes in this so much that I go, I just don't want to force it. If God's going to do it, he's going to do it. If this is the vision for First Alliance, then it's what he's going to do, whether we promote it or we cheerlead it or not. And so the vision goes like this. We are committed, no matter what, we are after this, to becoming a movement of Christ followers that multiply disciples, leaders, and churches to carry the life-transforming presence of God into all the world. We don't just want to multiply disciples, leaders, and churches that are devoid of God's Spirit. In fact, it is the defining thing 
of all of these. It's, it's why we've been talking about it so much over the past year and a half, two years as a church family, that the Holy Spirit of God would dwell in us and empower each one of us to do what he wants to do in us and through us. And so to multiply disciples, leaders, and churches, to carry the life-transforming presence of God into all the world. That's why we started the year with a prayer series, not a vision series, because it has to come from God. Jesus has to be at the center of this. It has to be what he's doing, not what we want to accomplish. And so specifically in the area of churches, multiplying churches, I wanna talk a little bit about that and what the future of First Alliance holds. So many of you who were here uh, a couple weeks ago or, or over the past uh, several months know that up until this month, we had a Nepali church plant that was meeting in our church building, home church with Pastor Michelle and his wife Sangeeta. And, uh, you know, we have incubated and nurtured and provided a safe place for them to grow as a small fledgling church to reach the Nepali and Bhutanese community here in the city of Columbus. And a couple of weeks ago, we prayed for them and commissioned them to send them to a new church building on the east side of Columbus in the Reynoldsburg area, which is where the majority of their families live and the majority of the Nepali Bhutanese community in Columbus lives on the east side of Columbus anyway. It was a great strategic decision and we were joyful to be able to send them over there. In fact, I was with Pastor Michelle this week in their new location, got to check it out, got to pray with him and encourage him. And so we're still connected, still a part of what God is doing through the ministry of home church. But God did something on that Sunday. And uh, so I wanna invite Isaac and Lena. I want to share a little bit about what, you guys to share a little bit about what God is doing in your hearts okay. and what that means. Let's come up here. Sure. So 2019, August, uh, I think July 2019, uh, we came to First Alliance Church. So I had a meeting with pastor in August. So we were at lunch at the Amul India yep. <laughs> restaurant. And um, so for the first time, I, I heard someone speaking about church plant in my life. Ever since I've been in, with many ministries before where I just used to be just like a keyboard player. That's how, uh, that's the role I always envisioned for me. But that was the first time where God used you to plant a seed, uh, thinking about church plant. Uh, so which from that day onwards, right, uh, we always had that in the back of our mind. Because our church is uh, kind of strategically located where we have so many Indian population out here. Uh, we used to think uh, probably this could be a great place uh, for an Indian church plant, you know. Uh, but we also had uh, some other uh, Indian fellowships. Uh, we are also part of that fellowships where we all go from uh, go to different churches, uh, but we gather uh, for a first Saturday or like a third Saturday to meet up and uh, do like a social and also spiritual uh, fellowship. So I was thinking uh, if it has to be a church, uh, I asked the Lord, like, you know, both me and Lena, we prayed. Uh, it has to be a Sunday, uh, you know, uh, worship. That It has to be like a Sunday church where we have to share the word of God and bring the unreached people. And also to empower even uh, my fellow Christian friends, Indian Christian friends, even uh, to the next level in the relationship with the God. That's one of the main uh, objective uh, we've been praying about God. Uh, so as Pastor said, right, the last two years of our journey, God was just trying to build us uh, through to this particular mission. Because when I came here, I never thought that I would end up in doing my lead studies, which uh, made me to focus more towards the mission. And also, now also being part of the CMA in, in terms of my work, so the vision is uh, kind of now broad now, like, you know, God is just trying to uh, help us to see through uh, his plans and purpose, that why he brought us here. Yeah. So with all these things happening, on January 9th, when pastor called me and Brady to come over and pray for Nepali church, right? He didn't even give us a notice that day, <laughs> that morning. So I was just caught off guard and I just came running here. And as I was praying, I could sense in my heart the spirit of the Lord saying, so now these, you know, now this Nepali church is going away. 
So you ask for a Sunday time slot, right? You have the slot here. So what are you going to do next? And that really resonated with my heart. I told Lena, uh, so what are we going to do? We asked something, and now God is opening the door for it. So uh, we need to submit to the Lord and ask uh, whether this is God's will for us to really uh, do this uh, initiative, uh, church plant. And you won't believe that one week God was speaking to us through Ephesians 2, 8 to 10. So where this word says that he has prepared the good things so that we can walk into it. So, I, I, you know, for me to imagine God, is, God has prepared everything for us, right? We don't need to worry about a place, venue, or anything. All we have to do is just show up in his presence, and he will do the rest. So today, uh, that's, the, uh, that's the kind of submission, you know, we gave to the Lord. And we met with Pastor last week to talk about this. And the, the next morning, I came, uh, you know, I woke up, and I was reading my daily devotion, and the passage was about John chapter 21, verse 15. It was Jesus asking Peter, if you love, all, if you love me above all these things, feed my sheep. So that was the same verse God gave me in 2016 when he called me out of my IT profession and put me into the path of mission. That was the exact same verse God gave me. Uh, for, uh, you know, he was just trying to reaffirm the calling that he has put in our lives, that we have a role to feed the body of Christ, which means through his word and to serve the body of Christ. Uh, so with everything being said, uh, so we commit this initiative and we told that we are not doing this on our own. We want to be part of the church and we told let this be an initiative from the church where the church, the Alliance Church, the first Alliance Church is trying to reach out to the Indian community over here. We even said we call this as an Alliance Indian Church. Uh, if God willing, you know, it's going to grow. And, and you know, God has already brought few families, few of our Indian friends now who don't have like a home church. So uh, we, are we are planning to do this like a uh, springtime uh, where we want to spread the word and uh, try to reach out to some more for more friends and see how God brings the people. And that's the dream we have. And uh, every time I see Pastor's board report, there is always one line he says, a dream church by Isaac. Yeah. I used to wonder for one year I have seen that uh, report. And today God is bringing that to happen. And uh, we are so thankful for what God has been doing through this church. And uh, we are so thankful for the love of everyone here that you have embraced us. You have made us feel uh, at home. And uh, so we are so thankful to be part of this family. Isn't that so cool? Oh, man. So, so we're, God's bringing people around this already as we're praying into this. Uh, obviously, there's some things that still need to be worked out and thought through, and that's why we're looking at a spring launch time in the afternoons here uh, in the church building. Um, so I just love it. Like, that's what, that's what God does. And so um, when Pastor Manu came, can you hold this? I have... Only two hands. Will you bring that up? <laughs> Pastor Manu came. Uh, we have flags in our sanctuary, and there's a long story to why we have flags in our sanctuary, but uh, we love it. They represent the fact that our church is called uh, to reach all nations and all ages of people, and we gave her a Nepali flag. For those of you that are in here, it's the one that's not a rectangle. It's the double triangle flag that's hanging over there, and we said this is, this is a prophetic gift. That, that God would use you to help us reach the Nepali community. And it's through her relationship with Pastor Michelle that Home Church came about and her ministry in the community. And so God is answering these prayers. And so we don't have an Indian flag in here, a flag from India. And I go, that's not gonna fly. And we wanna do this, get it? It's a flag joke for those of you that didn't get it. Uh, we wanna give this to you as a prophetic gift that God wants to use you and those that he's calling around you and us as a church family together to reach the Indian community that's here yeah. in Columbus. Right. And so we'll be hanging that up real shortly. I asked Pastor Aaron about, it, wouldn't it be cool if we brought out the lift and we rose the flag live? And he goes, that is a safety hazard, Josh. Don't do that. And so uh, I wanna pray for you guys real quick. Yeah. Will you reach out your hands to them and, and pray with me for them? 
Heavenly Father, thank you for Isaac and Lena. Thank you for Brady and for Brian and their whole family. Thank you for their love for you, Lord. And it's because of your love for them that you've, you've been with this, them on this journey uh, from Louisville to Columbus. They've followed you and they've trusted in you. The things that have happened in their lives from working to ministry to visas to new jobs and new homes, you have been working out. We trust in you and as they follow you and your calling into this new ministry and this new initiative, this uh, service to reach the Indian people who are far from you in this part of Columbus, Lord, we pray that your Holy Spirit would fill them and give them everything that they need, that they would trust in you and you would increase their faith to follow you every step of the way. We bless them and pray that you would anoint them, unite them as husband and wife in deeper ways with greater uh, unity with one another. And may you use them powerfully in the lives of others. Continue to bring other people and families around them to say, yes, yes, this is what God is doing. And we want to be a part of it. We trust all of these things in the strong name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. We take that mic with yeah, you? Yeah. I just want to share. Yeah, one more thing. Because uh, talking about the dangerous prayers. Yeah. So the last week message of Send Me was, uh, you know, Lena and I, we were still here, but we were watching a live outside because of this guy. <laughs> and uh, um, so we were just chatting with each other, how the Lord was just, when you said, uh, so for some of you, you have already been sent. Yeah. It's not like send me. So for us, that's how we felt. So God has already sent us to this field here. So there is no question of asking the Lord send me because he has already sent us. So that's what we felt. And I also want to thank my wife uh, for uh, her support. Uh, the reason is uh, God always gives us the oneness and unison, the one mind. And most often he confirms everything with the scriptures. And that is where, like, you know, we have that great freedom to do this, uh, you know, anything that he starts in our life, that we both are able to be in sync because he's in the middle of everything. So, yeah, thank you. Thank you guys so much. Awesome. Yeah, you can take it with you. So cool what God is doing, but that is not it. This vision that God has said, hey, we want to be about multiplying. I want you to be about multiplying churches to carry the life-transforming power and presence of God into all the world. Uh, there's another opportunity. So in Isaac, as Isaac and Lena step into this opportunity, I wanna give you another opportunity to be a part of a new work that I believe God is saying, now's the time to call people to this. One of the things in addition to Church Plant by Isaac Charles that's been on my list is the opportunity to serve uh, those who are struggling with addiction or in recovery. I've been praying, Lord, I know this is a great need. Uh, in, um, in COVID and in quarantine, we know those uh, addictions and things like that rise so much. They're very hidden in our part of the city as, a po as opposed to other parts of the city. Uh, but I really feel like now's the time to call people around this. And so uh, Recovery Church is an initiative that came out of a friend of mine who's a li licensed alliance worker in Florida, a uh, licensed pastor in Florida, uh, who also has, uh, has served in uh, the healthcare field for addiction recovery. And so the vision behind this for him was, what if we started a, churches, a church for those in the recovery community by those in the recovery community? Uh, and so they started this church, and now it's spread to over 20 different campuses in the United States. And so we've been talking and, and praying, Lord, what would it look like to start one in Columbus? At our sister church in the hilltop, Pastor Ben Douglas, they are forming people around this as well in their community. And just have a sense, like, now is the time to call people to this. And so if you have been affected personally or relationally, by those who are in recovery or are struggling with addiction, I would love for you to prayerfully consider what this would look like for you to be a part of it. We need a core team who would be willing to serve in this area. And so after the worship service on February 20th, we're just gonna have an interested persons meeting. And we'll meet right around the corner in room 100, the room off of the lobby, and we'll just talk a little bit about what this looks like and how you could participate in this in order to reach those who uh, are struggling with addiction 
or looking for community with Jesus at the center of it as far as their recovery goes. So we'd love for you to prayerfully consider coming to that interested persons meeting on February 20th. And the last thing is this. So three things in one announcement uh, is in addition to what God is doing here at First Alliance, uh, I've, I often get asked like, hey, what does church planting in Columbus look like for the Alliance? And there's a lot of people who would love to start a church that looks like this and reaches the Hispanic population or uh, does, uh, serves another community in another part of the city. And, uh, and so we're just calling all of those people together that are interested in being a part of a new work. No matter what the language is, no matter what the culture is, with Jesus at the center, we want to pray. Again, it has to be founded in the power of God. And so we're going to pray together. And so we are going to host the first of multiple prayer nights for the city of Columbus. This is for the Christian Missionary Alliance, but not just for the Christian Missionary Alliance. We're inviting uh, other tribes that love Jesus and follow him uh, to be a part of this as well. So March 11th, which I think is a Friday, somebody correct me on that if I'm wrong, a Friday evening at 6.30 p.m. here, we're gonna have a time where we're just praying and asking the Lord, Lord, what do you wanna do? The hopes as well is that you would meet people. You know, one of the things that's on my list is what does it look like to have an Arabic speaking evangelical church in the city of Columbus. You know, in the city of Columbus, there is one Arabic speaking evangelical church. That's it for the whole city. And that's not good enough. And so what would it look like? Now we can't force that. We don't, we don't you know, we're not gonna cajole our way into that, but we're gonna pray and ask God to provide people who would come around and start something like that. Uh, in addition to many, many other things, maybe there's things that God's put on your heart and there's other people in the city that God's saying, you're not alone in that. You're not alone. And so we'd love for you to come March 11th at 6.30 p.m. here. That's the vision God's doing. And again, this isn't a cheerleading vision. This is just the work of trusting in him and we're seeing God do it. What would it look like to be a movement of Christ followers? that multiply disciples, leaders, and churches to carry the life-transforming presence of God, not in our own strength, but in his power to all the world. We get to be a part of it. Really cool. Hey, I'm gonna have the worship team come up and lead us in maybe a song now with time. So would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time of testimony and celebration in what you're doing. We thank you that we don't have to force things but you desire, your love for people who are far from you is way greater than our love for people who are far from you. Your desire to use us when we say yes to you is unfathomable. We don't, we don't have to have it all together. We don't have to be the most talented. We don't have to be the most clever. We don't have to have a strategy in place. You just say, come to me with open hands, bring what you have, even if it feels small. Just come to me, trust in me, follow me, and I'll show you what I can do. Come to me, trust in me, follow me, and he'll show you what he can do. So Lord, we thank you for what you're doing. We're grateful to be a part of it. In Jesus' name, amen.